move on to the third presenter in our session on repair and maintenance. This man is Mr. Keith Malik. He's from AXO Global, where he's the global expert. Oh, no. He's going to be talking about yeah. here, and he's going to be talking about winning the customer of the future. Please give him a fantastic welcome. Um, I don't normally eat one of these, because those of you in the audience who know me won't be that normally loud enough. I hope you get what you're doing. We're all good? Okay, those two gentlemen did a great presentation, thank you very much. Um, I actually want to talk to you about something that's slightly different from these guys. Um, actually, we're about our world's largest coatings company, and we have a big presence in the aftermarket. And one of the big things that's um, happened to my role is that I visit a number of different countries around the world. And during that process, I'm often challenged with uh, being asked a number of questions, and I in turn ask our staff a number of different, a number of different questions. And one of the big questions that always comes up at the top of my list is uh, how do we win our customers in the future? But more importantly, do our body shop customers understand who is their customer in the future? It's not enough for a paint company to be able to sell paint product. Sadly, it doesn't sell itself. I think we have the best products in the world. But unfortunately, we still need to understand our customers' needs. And by understanding their needs and helping them to sell their businesses, we in turn, in turn into our own success. What we do know is, regardless of which market you're in, living you're in, and we'll be talking quite specifically around the Middle East, we know that there's often a battle for who owns the customer whether that be from the um, OEM, whether that be from the, uh, from the body shop, the independent, the insurance company. There are many people that actually pull on the ownership of the customer. I'm sure all of you will recognise any of the names around here. So whether it be the OEMs, employees, consumers, each and every one of these is a stakeholder in the, in the industry we work in. And each one of those stakeholders has a part to play in terms of the decision making process. And that's where, regardless of which market we're in, whether here in Saudi Arabia, whether in UAE, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Obama, wherever it might be, one of the big challenges is to try and understand where the strength lies and subsequently who makes the decision in the repair process. One of the things that we've been doing within Acton Bell is that we've been mapping the process in terms of the market maturity. Now, I'm going to come across the front of this slide here, so if anyone misses anything, let me know. But one of the things that we do know is that ownership of the customer is often driven by who has control of the supply chain. So the people that have control of the supply chain are the ones that generally have ownership of the customer. And control of the supply chain comes from the, the, the body shop's ability to capture that customer whether that be an OEM body shop or whether that be uh, an independent body shop. And what we know is that as markets mature, they generally start with um, broken dead sales, you know, very little network development and, and no steering of repairs. What we also know is that very quickly as markets mature, uh, and very quickly we see insurance companies moving into rent sales, we, saw, we see development of networks and we started to see the early development of networks here in the Middle East. Insurance companies then very quickly taking control of approved networks and launching their own networks and then becoming very active in steering those same repairs into their networks. I've got a term here that you may not all recognise. Um, in many countries we refer to a term called accident management and that is often third parties in this particular instance, often things like the Road Traffic Association that may get involved in terms of starting to steer the repair and therefore they become quite a key stakeholder in terms of the, in terms of the repair industry. Typically, you know, as the market evolves, you'll see you know, 10, 20, 30, 40% of, of, of market, um, market capture rate and then very quickly, um, this is the area that um, is the bane of my life, that we get involved in things like you'll see um, insurance companies, OEMs, and paint companies get involved in doing deals on paint, deals on parts, and that becomes quite an issue. As markets mature, we also 
everyone here okay? But as markets are mature, we'll be able to very quickly see approved networks becoming the, the main drivers behind the, the, the decision about what happens in, in a particular industry or market. And we also see that the insurance companies have take, greater, take greater control in terms of the direction of that repair and subsequently have ownership of, of that whole supply chain. As we look forward in time, and this is one of the big challenges that I face in my role, one of the big things that I have to do is actually think about what, you know, looking at where a market is today in terms of its maturity curve and trying to understand what's going to come next for that country. Quite often, so what we do know is that as markets evolve, um, we also see battlegrounds being created. So we see the battlegrounds being created between OEMs, independents, battlegrounds being created between OEMs and insurance companies for, for the direction of that repair. And that's, and that's where quite often where that battleground exists and you know, we see that in quite, in quite a lot of Western markets. That's where some of the big challenges are because you know, everyone's fighting for ownership of the customer. Particularly in the Middle East, um, one of the big things that we come across and some of the things that we're seeing when we, when we travel around the Middle East is we're starting to see the development of a battleground being created between OEMs and insurers. You know, mandatory, mature, mandatory insurance is relatively young, four or five years old in, in the Middle East, and subsequently, as an industry, they haven't really got control of the supply chain. But we also know that they're learning very, very fast. And I will talk to you shortly about the kind of drivers for change and the speed of change. As they are moving, as they are learning very, very fast, at the moment the balance of power tends to work with the OEMs. Typically, you know, because of finance arrangements, leasing arrangements, they are naturally gifted the repair. The driver of that vehicle will automatically come back to Toyota, Ford, GM, Rango, whoever it might be. What I'm here to say is that position may not naturally be the place moving forward. And I would ask you all to think about who will influence that repair moving forward? Who will influence that repair coming into uh, the body shops? As these guys start to gain strength, get more control, inevitably the balance of power will change. And that's going to be one of the big challenges. Again, it's about answering the question, who is the customer of the future? Who is going to be the person who we actually can make sure that has an impact on the future of your business? I showed you the maturity curve earlier, and I've shown you um, a, a little bit about you know, the, the kind of balance of power, the shift between insurers and, and OEMs. But one of the things that is an issue is no one is very hard to predict the, the pace of change, the speed at which these changes are going to happen. But what we do know when we look at a country from an economic perspective or a regional perspective, we know that there are three key drivers. The economy. The economy has a huge impact on the pace of change, people's wealth, their ability to you know, their ability to buy new vehicles. And we only have to look at the age of the car park in the Middle East to know that you know, whilst it has a relatively young car park, you know, it is starting to age. We also know that technology will be a key driver. You heard from Graham, you heard from Tim, and they talked about the technology that's being driven into vehicles that is forcing repair processes that technology will have an impact on and, and play a part in terms of who owns a customer. Because an independent repairer may not readily have the technology, the repair methodology, the experience, the training, and the ability that Toyota, Ford, GM, or Vauxhall dealership will have in order, to, in order to repair that vehicle. Also, I'm sorry this is upside down, but consumer demand will play a part. People are becoming far more educated around they have choices around what happens to their vehicle. They may that they don't necessarily have to take the vehicle to where they have traditionally taken it. Subsequently, choice, the internet, you know, the, 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 in, in, in terms of all their ability to understand and, and, and understand where the choices come from, will also have an impact on the speed of change. When we think about, um, I'm going to go back. I'm just going to go back a couple of slides here. When we think about this whole process and the market maturing, typically we know that from 
this point where there was no networks and little steering to, to the UK market where I come from, that process took about 15 years. What we also know now is that the speed of change for the Middle East, and I've got a couple of flags here for Saudi Arabia and UAE, that process of speed of change may only take two or three years because you know, we know that government, we know the insurance companies, we know the OEMs are all actively seeking to take ownership of that customer now. So, I just want to talk to bring it all back to the Middle East a little bit and talk about some specific elements that will also have an impact in, in this market. And uh, I've got a very simple uh, Middle East uh, scorecard and this is the kind of things that I look at when I'm in a market and I look at, I look at trying to understand the market maturity. We know that the car park is relatively flat in the Middle East. We know it's getting older. Whilst the economy is doing well, we're actually seeing older vehicles in, 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 you know, surviving far longer in the market. We're seeing that the manufacturers are now having far more durable parts. We're seeing that the, we're seeing an increase in the total loss in the total loss rate. And that's having an impact on the market. We're also seeing, due to te vehicle technology, fewer accidents. I only need to go down the Shenzhou Road to look at the amount of speed cameras there are to see that people are driving slowly. Apart from 12 o'clock onwards, when everybody seems to come out and they're souped up AMGs and BMWs and racing around like that. So it, it, we know from market dynamics, you know, those are the macroeconomic factors. In terms of internally, again, this fits really well with the kind of message that was delivered by Tim. Um, you want again? Great. Um, you know, new materials and new repair methodology being introduced will, will have an inevitable impact. We also know that um, a, a lot of the OEMs, a lot of the insurers, are now taking more of a global view to the way that they act. Whilst they may be local, by the way, perceived as local and act local, they do you know, they have a wider span of influence and have a wider span of knowledge and understanding of what's going on in other markets. So you will see them bringing that knowledge and information into the Middle East, and that will drive change again. When we look at OEMs, um, and we look at um, particularly you know, large dealer groups that are, are, are involved with OEMs, and we have some of them up for tanks out here in the front. It's no longer that they just have a Toyota network. Quite often, you know, the, the trend is to drive to, to, drive to multi-brand ne networks. We know that competition is increasing because no longer is it naturally assumed that you know, Toyota or body shop will only repair Toyotas. Because actually now, GM are quite happy to repair a Toyota. And, you know, and Toyota are quite happy to repair a GM. They don't want to. But if one comes through the door, they're not going to say no. So competition's increasing. But what we also know is the after-sales market, which is why we're all here today, Water Mechanical as well. That will, that will play an increasingly strong part in the way we make decisions in terms of commercially um, dealing with OEMs, dealing with insurance companies. And finally, I just want to talk to you a bit about the external factors. You know, we're in the Middle East, and price plays such a massive part in what we do. Every time I speak to a body shop, every time I speak to a part supplier, every time I speak to uh, a tyre supplier, it doesn't matter what good, how good a job you do. You can be the best body shop in the world, you can promise the best repair process. This word here, I was with one of our distributor partners earlier today, he's in the room at the back. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is a big issue because one of the things that um, has, one of the things that concerns our, our company in particular, our customers, our body shop customers, is justifying the price. So, so the the end user, the insurer, the OEM, whoever's actually paying for that repair, that they actually understand that actually you know, there is a value attached to that repair. It's no longer enough to compare somebody who has invested in all the technology, the training that Tim showed, or somebody who's you know, demonstrated that they can repair a vehicle to the, with the right methodology. They cannot be compared to someone who's repairing the car in the back street, in a small garage behind the door, for 500 dirhams cheaper. 
you are not getting a comparable repair. The fleet and insurance direction of work, and we, you know, we've already seen a number of insurers here in the Middle East starting to get really active in, uh, in, in, in the direction of work. And you know, the fleet particularly, you know, played a bit of a bigger part. Uh, in general, the professionalisation of players in the aftermarket, we know that government is already starting to play a part in wanting to um, strengthen the, the, the body repair industry. You know, they're talking about things like licensing, they're talking about things like making sure that you know, you know, people are trained to do the right job, that they have the right kind of abilities, the right tooling. And you know, again, you know, we mustn't forget that customers have a choice. And the more educated they become, the more aware they become, that choice is quite important too. So, in my wrap up, I'm actually coming back to my first slide. And in that first slide, you know, when you go back, you go back to your own countries, you go back to your own body shops, you go back to your own you know, distribution centres, all I would ask you to think about is think about where your market lives in the majority curve. Think about all the key players that have an impact on your business today and think about the likely changes that are coming and therefore what impact that will have on your business and therefore who is going to own that customer in the future because ultimately whether it be Axel about TTI and Plenum, aka whether it be Alpha Tain, we all need to be conscious about not where our customers are coming from today where our future customers are coming from because that's where survival comes from and it's preparing ourselves for that future. So thank you very much. Thank you.